Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome to A Fairy's Guide to Self-Care. This week join me as I write off three points in the week to be completely free. Embrace the moments with the guidance of nature, with bakes and potions and simply take care of myself. So sit back, relax and keep on watching. There once was a girl, Alwyn her name, who liked to keep busy. On Monday through Friday, she worked her wings off beyond nine to five each day. The fairies, they said, relax yourself, for now it is time to play. But Alwyn proceeded to make her plans and wondered why she grew more and more not okay. She was working herself far too much and forcing her creativity. The fairies were worried that burnout was on the way. But Alwyn's list grew and grew until it was overwhelming. And it was only then she could see this was far beyond her capability. She needed a break, a balance in life, time for herself to breathe. So she told the fairies that starting tomorrow, she'd make good quality time for herself three times this week. The fairies were happy with her decision and rushed her off to bed, for they knew if she could keep this up, she'd find the balance she'd longed for instead. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to this feeling, the overwhelming feeling when life gets too much. I do feel that moments like this can really help us to learn, learn our boundaries with what we can handle, but also so that we can learn to look after ourselves. In times of struggle, I'm comforted by the idea that nature will not judge nature will do its best to let us breathe and to not be bombarded with overcrowded thoughts, judgments and opinions. They also follow the guidance of the animals and the insects of the wood. They are always connected to the weather and the pattern of the seasons and there's always a message to learn from their presence. Whilst Charlie patrols the neighbourhood, I have seemed to gaze at something else recently, something breathtaking. This pyracanther in full bloom at the bottom of my garden. From afar it seems to be an overwhelming white mass of shimmering beauty, but when you look up closely, you will see thousands of tiny flowers, different varieties of insects, butterflies, bees, in fact heaps of different varieties of bees. And recently I have felt like that bee buzzing around all over the place, wanting to collect and do everything all at once to make so much of this energy within the air. I'm so grateful for this, but right now, I no longer feel like that buzzing bee. I feel like a butterfly. I have felt very drawn to butterflies recently. The way they flutter around aimlessly all over the place, carefree and childlike. I felt the butterfly was my new spirit animal, so I decided to have a look at its meaning to see what I could do to help myself. The butterfly's message read, Lighten up and stop taking everything so seriously. Get ready for big change, one where an old habit, way of thinking or lifestyle is going out and a new way of being is emerging. It's time to make the changes you've been considering. In spite of the challenges, you'll get through this transition and always know that this too shall pass. Express yourself by wearing more colorful clothing. Well, I felt a little embarrassed. This card was absolutely right. I had been taking life way too seriously. I looked down at my dress, my gray dress, and I thought, this is doing nothing for me right now. So I was to make life a little more fun today. Wear a 
Wearing the colour of the emotion that we want to attract can be a very simple, quick mood boost. The power and the frequency of colour is amazing and it works every time. I felt invincible, like I was a little fairy carrying out her chores. And as you know, green is a colour I often gravitate towards, but this pixie green, there is something about it that brings me so much life. Is there a colour that does this for you? I'm so glad I did this. So glad. I've been feeling sorry for myself for too long. I need to just embrace it. My mum will be so mad at me for getting this dress dirty. <laughs> I don't care. Because if you get things dirty, you can wash them. I'm so happy. <laughs> On Wednesday, I felt it only right to continue embracing the butterfly's message. So, I took an unpredictable and spontaneous flight into the enchanted woods. Today though, I had no end goal, no plan, I just wanted to embrace whatever came my way, much like the butterfly. I found myself drawn towards the healing trail and when I arrived it looked and felt like the beginning of summer. The heat day was very dry with a warm breeze and the grasses here softly blew within it. I continued up the trail and was mesmerised with what I saw. These beautiful foxgloves in full bloom. I love foxgloves so much and I'm so surprised to see them here down the healing trail. If you can't tell right now, they're slowly bobbing in the wind and I love the folklore behind them that says when they're nodding they are bowing their heads at fairies <laughs> and I love that and it's just so true can you just see the majesticness of this plant it's so beautiful especially when you see the bees the fairy bums sticking out of it as they go into each cone flower right well I think what we should do is find some more but don't touch them because they are very poisonous and I think rightly so because if the fairies want to make their home here they should choose something that maybe is poisonous to humans but maybe not to them. I only had to travel a few seconds before I found so many more beautiful tall steeples of foxgloves, many within the shade, all nodding away silently and so playful in nature. I felt entranced by them, but also like the fairies were with me, watching over me and telling me it was all going to be okay if I just embraced the moment. As I was enjoying the sunshine, something seemed to be stirring within the air. The sun went behind some thick grey clouds and very quickly the atmosphere felt very thick and the woods got quiet, almost too quiet. A downpour of rain hit the forest and a light mist ascended. It wasn't cold rain though, it felt like rainforest rain. I first took shelter under a fir tree, gazing out on the forest, and I witnessed insects doing the same, sheltering themselves to protect their gentle wings. I also witnessed all the colours of the forest getting brighter with the more droplets of water that fell. The sound was so relaxing, it felt cleansing, so pure, that in that moment I thought to myself, I don't have wings to protect. 
I wanted to run and embrace the rain and it was the most riveting experience. Water, whether it be rain or tears, can take so much heaviness away. A few minutes later, the rain began to lighten and the sun came beaming out. It felt like a huge weight had been lifted within the forest and within myself. The air felt thinner. The birds began to sing again. The insects even came out from hiding to drink the droplets of water that were left. And it was a much needed cleanse, but also one for me too. A cleanse I never knew I needed. Within minutes of the sun returning, the mist had faded and the forest returned back to its dry state. And a rather soggy Alwyn ventured home, cleansed and rejuvenated. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome. So it is now Friday and today I'm kind of overcompensating for how I feel with how I look. Anyone else do that? <laughs> so basically when I feel sad I will make myself look really good but when I feel happy I won't care as much and just kind of be more natural so yeah I don't know why that is but it makes me feel good about myself so that's fine basically today I'm having some thoughts that I know shouldn't be there and they keep kind of coming back into my brain and kind of keep tormenting me so I had a word with these thoughts and I know they're just silly sausages they don't need to be there. They're wasting my time, basically. So that's why I've come out into the woods today, so I can get my mind off it, so I can film, which definitely gets my mind off everything. I'm so grateful to be able to do that because I love filming so much. But also to have a little fairy mission that I'm on. But the first thing I need to do to get myself out of my mind is to get myself back into my body. And when the coast is clear, my loves, I do just that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> much better. So what I'm doing today is putting my mind on a creative fairy task. Creative ideas and things like that just always work well for me when I want to forget something else. So I'm on the lookout for some new fairy furniture for my fairy pot. Now the other day I was talking to my friend Amy. Hello Amy. <laughs> and we were talking about fairies like we usually do and she suggested the idea that when people put fairy doors on trees that already have fairy doors, when they put them over that fairy door they're covering up the door, they're covering up the fairy's home. And you know what, I couldn't agree more. I think that when you see a fairy home, fairies will create natural homes through the natural beauty of nature. So my plan this year with my fairy pot is to find things in nature that are naturally beautiful, that I don't need to glue, that I don't need to do anything with. I have a fairy pot, like I keep saying, <laughs> and I actually made it last year in my fairy garden makeover video. It's really beautiful and kind of overgrown looking now. It has these fairy mushrooms in it, it has some succulents in it, it has a little watering hole in the middle along with many many crystals that are buried underneath it now. But it has these kind of brown patches on it and I feel like those brown patches are screaming for some fairy furniture. So we're gonna find some today hopefully, some that have just been perfectly molded through the beauty of the coincidence of nature. Not so much of a coincidence to me to be honest. <laughs> so let's go. What's this? A little window perhaps? Look how 
pig, the oak leaves are getting my precious babies. door in there of course i'm not saying don't put fairy doors you've made on trees just <laughs> not on naturally made fairy doors from trees you see what i'm saying this is a natural fairy pool it has been naturally made from this beautiful wood stump So I have a little plan hatching from all of my fairy object sticks that I found which I'm very excited to put together when I get back. I must add though I feel so much better. I feel Fairy bench, lovely fairy bench. A little magnifying glass by the pool of reflection so they can look at themselves and reflect. I think a little secret bed for them, just tucked away here. For me, the simplicity of nature, mixed with a mindful, gentle activity, will always be kind on my brain. It may not make sense to others, but it soothes that little fairy that lives within me, that craves nurturing. So, I again decided to change into something a little more fairy tale and do a spot of gardening. Mid-gardening though, I found a little present, this grey feather which was from a kind wood pigeon. Grey feathers are a sign of peace and tranquility. They can tell us that calmness and clarity is coming our way, a message I dearly needed to hear. I then took a look at the pyracantha to absorb its beauty yet again, and I saw the bees continuing to buzz away, doing what they loved, even this one simply resting and catching its breath within the flowers. And it made me think that even the busiest of bees need to stop and rest for a while. So I've decided that this afternoon calls for a spot of baking and potion making. I've been utterly inspired by nature this week, as you know, the bees, the butterflies, just being led and called by nature. I want to make something in honour of that, but also I want to make something that is again calming and soothing on this thing. <laughs> and I thought what better way than to use lavender. Lavender is a bit of a controversial ingredient, but I think it's heavenly, especially when it's baked into some shortbread biscuits. So, I first picked my lavender, and this would act as one out of four ingredients for my lavender shortbreads. The other ingredients are plain flour, sugar, and unsalted butter. Firstly, I separated the lavender heads from the flour. 
I cut these up small so they'd be speckled throughout the biscuits and then placed these in a bowl along with some unsalted butter. and caster sugar. I then measured the flour. And mix this by hand into the butter mixture until it formed a dough. I kneaded this on a work surface for a minute or two until it became smooth and then cut it in half and I rolled each half into a sausage shape and then sprinkled some granulated sugar onto the surface and rolled each one in this to give the biscuits an extra crunch and then put it into the fridge to firm for around 20 minutes. Once firm, I cut only one of these sausages up. The others I saved until a few days later, arranged them onto a greased baking tray and then placed them into a moderate oven. Whilst these were baking, it was time to work on my calming potion. So I headed into the garden. I have been experimenting with the different calming teas recently, each one so different, but I wanted a tea to complement the biscuits today, so of course I chose lavender. But to complement this further, some mint. Mint can really help calm down our nervous systems and great to drink if you are ever feeling a little anxious. Once I had everything ready, I poured myself the tea and finally added some dandelion honey. And as I stirred my potion, I said I give myself permission to breathe, calm and unwind, for nothing but ease and tranquility will enter my mind. I said this over and over again until it began to sink in and really mean something to me. And then, sip by sip, I drank my calming potion, noticing how I felt the more I drank, feeling myself relaxed and calm. And if any thoughts that I didn't want to be there came into sight, I simply blew them away with an outbreath. And eventually, I was able to simply be. When filming this video, I had no idea what was going to happen. I just wanted to see what nature would do if I allowed it to show me the way. And well, I had no doubt in my mind that it wouldn't. Nature always guides us, shows us and tells us how we can heal. All we need to do is be open to accepting its messages. Nature is truly healing and for that, I am eternally grateful. It has taught me this week that even the busiest bee needs to rest on the flowers sometimes, needs to shelter from the rain, and other times just needs to embrace it. Thank you for watching Enchanted Ones. All my love, Alwyn.